What's up everybody? Dallas with Home Poker Pros here and today I've got five tips on how you can improve your home game to keep you guys coming back on a regular basis. Every person who I talk to who hosts Poker Night has one goal in mind and that's to have Poker Night on a regular basis. Whether for you that's once a week, once a month, once every six months, once a year, whatever the case may be, I've got five tips to help you improve your poker night to keep you guys coming back on a regular basis. Okay, tip number one. This is the most important one, so we're starting off with it. And to be honest, all the other tips follow right in line with it. And that's organization. It, I've gone to poker nights where uh, it's not so organized. Everybody's showing up, you know, six, seven, whatever. You get started, nobody really knows who's dealing, how many chips you get, what the blinds are, when they're going to go up. That's not really all that fun. If I have one tip that I could share with you, it would be to organize your poker game. Before everybody gets there, have an idea of what your starting stack is going to be, what your blind levels are, how to randomize seating. All of these different things will play a factor in showing that you're prepared. Everybody wants organization. Nobody wants chaos, especially poker players. We want to get there. We want everything to be set up. We want to know what to do, where everything is going to be, and how much we're going to get paid. Have, have an idea of what your payout's going to be. Organization is so key because it keeps guys coming back. It lets guys know, hey, when this guy hosts a poker game, I know it's going to be organized. I know it's going to run smooth. I know exactly what to expect. And so that's tip number one, is just making sure that organizing it, let everybody know beforehand what the plan is, and think you'll find that people will really enjoy themselves and come back more often. Okay, tip number two, and that is the buy-in. You have to understand the type of people that are gonna be coming and playing. If you're a single college guy with a bunch of college friends, you're probably not gonna be able to do a $200 buy-in. Your buy-ins might be 10 to 20 bucks, and that's okay. You just have to understand who is going to be coming and what you want to be doing with it. For example, one of the poker games that I host is with a lot of my buddies and stuff who, you know, none of them are really serious about poker. Maybe me and a couple other guys really enjoy it. So we only have a $20 buy-in. For a lot of you watching, that might not even be enough to get you to start your car and drive over to play poker. But for them, it's a lot of fun. We get together, we eat some snacks, you play some poker, and you might win 100 bucks or something. I also go to games where it's more serious and everybody wants to play actual poker so we do a higher buy-in. So just understand your demographic. If your buy ins too high, you're not going to be getting guys who might be strapped for money to come back. If your buy ins too low, those of you who are serious about poker may not want to come. So adjust your buy-in accordingly. Okay, tip number three is setting, meaning where are you actually going to be playing your poker at? In your living room, in your garage, at your warehouse? Picking a setting is really important because you're trying to create an atmosphere and environment to where people feel comfortable coming over and playing on a regular basis. They know they're not going to be intruding on you or your family. It's going to be a chill environment where they can come kick back and play some poker. For example, if I hosted poker in my living room with my wife and my screaming kid, nobody would have a really good time, least of all me. So picking your setting is really crucial. I personally like to host poker in my warehouse that I run my business out of. We have a TV there, we have a couch there, we can turn on a football game. It's just a really chill environment. So again, pick a setting to where you feel like everybody coming over is going to feel comfortable, they're going to have a really good time just playing poker, they're not feel like they're intruding, nobody wants to feel like that, and they can just come focus on having a good time and playing some good poker. Okay, tip number four is expanding your network, and here's what I mean by that. As poker players, we all have something in common into where we love to play poker. And even though you may not be best friends with somebody, you still might enjoy sitting next to someone at a table and playing poker and taking their money. You know, that's what's so great about poker is unlike things like pickup basketball, you don't have to worry about if you're athletic enough. All you have to worry about is, hey, can I afford the buy-in and can I come play? So when you invite people over, if you have an extra seat, you know, maybe ask some of your guys, hey, do you have a friend or a brother-in-law or somebody that, you know, you might want to invite to come play? When that person comes over, just afterwards, go up and say, hey, can I get your number so I can let you know when the next game is? It gives you that pipeline of getting people to come out and play. Not everybody's going to be able to come once a month or however often you want to host poker night. But 
if you expand your network, you know, you may be able to text 25 people and then get 10 people to come. So expand your network to where you can get a pipeline of people to where you can text and you can get a good game consistently going. Okay, tip number five. And this one's kind of a layup and it's pretty self-explanatory. And that is making the experience great for everybody. So here's what I mean by that. My dad hosts a really big poker game once a year or so. He hosts more, but he hosts a really big one once a year. My dad's really, really good at smoking and grilling meat. So what he does is he'll literally spend a few hundred dollars just on getting brisket, ribs, all of these things where guys come over and it's more of an experience rather than just coming over to play cards. Now I'm not saying you have to go all out for your poker night. But what I am saying is make the experience really good for whoever comes over. You know, if you're inviting somebody new over, introduce them to everybody, try to make a connection so they can start talking with people, have some snacks there, turn on the football game, you know, just make the experience really good. Just think these things through on, if you're going to a poker game, how would you want the experience to be? Alrighty guys, that wraps up this video. Hey, if you like what you see here, stick around because I'm going to be coming out with more videos on hosting poker game, maybe some poker strategy, things like that. I'm no professional, but I just love poker and want to share with everybody and want to help out. So, if you have any questions, leave a comment down below and we'll see you in the next video. Peace!